Welcome beautiful Aries to a new era. My name is Emma. Aries, this is your love reading starting here today on the 8th of February. Uh, I've set the time frame to early February till early March. Although there, it is a little bit like I was thinking about doing this the Valentine's way because we have the Valentine's Day coming up on the 14th of February. Um, not everybody's too keen to celebrate that across the world very much so in the Americas, but maybe there's people there who doesn't want to celebrate that either. It's just that uh, the fact that whether you want to celebrate it or not, um, whether you think it's a very commercial day or not, it's highlighted on love, which I love. It's, it's very many people go into really focus on the love around that day. So there isn't that there isn't heightened, a heightened type of energy around love for this upcoming week for sure. And then to top it off, we have a new moon on the 11th of February, which is like a portal number. It's um, stepping through to the new, leaving the old behind. It's also very much about dreams and visions and fantasies and stuff like that. And in some parts of the world, we have the new moon on the 12th, which is all about the masculine energy, making it happen, the manifestation of everything. So it's a beautiful energy in terms of wanting to manifest your dream in love it's perfect for for this this uh love readings for this week so aries milk and honey wow oh sorry for yelling <laughs> i was just flying out there okay i feel one more and let's see because when i did a little just to tune into each and every sign and just a little I just play around with the cards for a bit and I sit like I ask for the Aries energy and uh, the higher power card just dropped out a couple of times so let's see if that comes back around that flip but didn't really want to come out so let's see ooh complete opposite here uh, mending it's like uh, it's like it doesn't really know if it wants to be a part of it so I just want to show you it mending you might be mending something with somebody uh, big difference in energies here we go from milk and honey which is the foundation this is the foundation of your energy this is the foundation for your love right now which is so beautiful uh, and we have the observer taking a step back probably like paying attention listening in observing what it is that you truly want out of a relationship and uh, but then we finish it off with the orphan so it's not as powerful in energy like but it's there is that orphan feeling so we're going to see what is going on here because if we compare the milk and honey to the orphan those are not in the same league whatsoever these are very different energies so we want to clarify this milk and honey please and the decks that I'm using, I've listed them down below in the in the description box. There's another number five, so I just have to point out we have a five with the fifty one here with milk and honey. Fifty one speaks about um, five is all about great opportunity for change, and number one is um, number one is a brand new beginning. We have a number five with the orphan, great opportunity for change, and then another number five with change your focus. So we have three number five on the table, which is, uh, some would say that that is like, oh man, there's so much stuff to like, challenges to, to work through. When this comes out and we start with the milk and honey, you're already past this, which numerology wise means um, you're on your way to, to mas mastery, to, to become your own inner master, to, um, to really start to understand your creative powers and your um, your worth. Okay. Okay. So milk and honey with clarification is change your focus. So there's something about this is on the table for you. Literally, it's on the table for you. Well, milk and honey speaks about the beauty in life, the blessings in life, the the golden opportunities that wants to come your way if you let it. Um, and we have a great opportunity for change with a new beginning. We're stepping into a new beginning and this is the elephant that is like, uh, the elephant is, is swimming 
in the milk and honey and just playing around in there and having so much fun. So there's like wisdom, wisdom playing around in wisdom playing. Uh, there, there, this is on the table for you, Aries. I feel like in order for you to receive it, we need to change your focus. Um, we, we don't do, need to do anything. You need to change your focus. It always helps is if somebody's there to help you a tiny bit or to like pull you up. Um, it's not too heavy. It literally is not too heavy, but there, you, you're in need of a change of focus. Uh, we have freedom behind you. We have messages coming in. And in order for you to completely hear them, uh, you need to, to stay authentic to who you are. Stay authentic to, your, to yourself. There's something about this card being very silent. So see this as a almost like a hermit journey, meaning see this as a, okay, we go inwards. Milk and honey is being uh, presented on the table. Is there for you to, to receive and for you to experience if you want to. And while you're sort of searching for yourself and seeking that very most, like the truth, the authentic version of who you are into this world, for this world, for yourself, and definitely in the relationship, um, it's like go quietly. You don't have to share everything with the world about your inner journey. But there's for sure an inner journey going on. And there's, um, I see this as you're, as you're seeing it as a very narrow, Aries, I don't know what's going on with you right now, but there's something about um, seeing it as, as a very slim opportunity. Like there's a very, do you see the window there that she's looking out of? It's like, it's a very slim opportunity. So, so whether you think that it's not many, uh, either you're in a relationship and you feel like it's not really going anywhere. It's a very slim opportunity here. Or you're single and you, and the, and the, um, not opportunity, the, the chances of meeting somebody is very slim. And, and we see these windows here, like the never ending windows. That's just a little bit of a gap here. That's your focus. It's not the windows focus is you that has narrowed that down to that slimness. So I'm going to read out the milk and honey relationship um, 51. If we add those up, we have number six, which is love. Great opportunity for change and, and a brand new beginning. And we add those up, we have, a, we have love on the table. Um, so this is like me reading out what is there for you that perhaps you're not seeing right now. Uh, Still quite new to this deck and to this uh, book, so bear with me. 51. <clears throat> Milk and honey. The essential meanings of this card is the taste of prosperity, opportunities born of authenticity. Isn't that exactly what we said? Opportunities born out of authenticity. As long as you stay truthful to who you are. It's really important right now that you stay true to who you are. And just because you straight stay true to who you are, you don't have to share it with everybody. There's something with a silent shift here. Do this change, make this change within you and sort of keep a little bit more to yourself so that you don't scatter your energy everywhere. There's something about telling, telling certain things about yourself and the minute you start to tell, you are inviting other people to think things about it and you you seem to be in a little bit of a fragile state here and you're going to be very affected by their comeback if that makes sense like whatever they think about something so if this is you being in a relationship you don't know really what way to go in this relationship or if you're single and you don't really know like Mm, maybe you have certain people you want to start to date or you're even thinking about uh, should I even get out there because the opportunity is, is so slim and you open up for that discussion people are going to start to have ideas about it they're going to have ideas about your relationship and if you're not ready to hear those and if you're a little bit uh, in a little bit of a um, um, vulnerable state that might actually increase your insecurity and increase your uh it, it just there's something about and it more more fun way of saying it is that 
if you stay a little bit more, stay true to yourself with all those, all that blue, throw energy center. If you stay true to yourself, true to your authentic version, and just keep that to you for a little bit, it, not even you have to talk about it to yourself for the moment until you sort of just become a little bit stronger so that you understand what's out there for you and that you come from a more secure place and more aligned place so that you can approach this relationship, whatever it is. You don't even have to share that with other people. Not that you shouldn't or not that you can't. There's just something vulnerable about you going on right now that you're sort of very, very much listening more to what other people think and say rather than your own alignment. And we have great opportunity for change here with the number five there again. So uh, listen more to yourself. So I'm just going to... Okay, moving on. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to continue to read here. Uh, we said opportunities born of authenticity. Nurturing abundance, trusting that your needs will be met. Trust that your needs will be met. That is a big one, I feel. Trusting that your needs will be met. It doesn't matter what, what, in, what that incorporates. Um, the Oracle's message is, you've entered a sweet time in your life, enjoying the land of milk and honey that everyone wants to experience. It's an interlude that feels more languid than ambitious. When all your senses are awake to the unlimited possibilities in the universe, these times are precious and only come when you're in your authentic zone. There's very much about this authenticity. Wearing the world on a loose garment, like not in, not, not in a straight jacket. It's more like, it's just, yeah, we go with the flow um loosely uh not wanting yet able to nur not wanting yet able to be nourished in ways both tangible and subtle abundance is an energy that you are a living part of all your needs are being met you're that's the second time you are given the gift of nourishment in every form so nourishment in every form that is like People around you nour nourishes you. Uh, nutrition nourishment. Like it's it's everything. Uh, and this is the relationship that I want you to hear. <clears throat> the, red, the, the, blah, 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 the relationship message rather. Sensuality, connection and passionate romance between lovers. Sweet moments of understanding and love among friends and family are all here for you to savor now. Your heart's calling will be answered. Let your thoughts and feelings be sweet with gratitude and you will be nourished with the honey of abundance. So there's something about um, changing your focus and, and, and be more gentle and kind and sweet and soft. The milk and honey is all about that sweetness all about that sweetness adding up to number six there that that's the love and harmony that's a connection with your inner being with two number fives here to clarify it <clears throat> um we're observing it it's like take a step back and don't be so involved in whatever relationship is going on for you or, or lack of relationship that is going on right you right now <laughs> right now um the observer is all about having a perspective to not go so much into details. If, if there's any challenge that you're sort of working through in a relationship or if there's any challenge if you're single and especially around this Valentine's Day, if there's like an important, like Christmas or any other big holiday, I mean, all the rest of the days of the, of the year basically is not going to bother you that much if you feel lonely or if you feel like you're in the right or the wrong relationship, but come Christmas and you're alone, you're gonna feel it. Or come Valentine's Day and you're alone or you're, you're sort of in the wrong relationship, it's gonna be highlighted, right? So Christmas and Valentine's Day doesn't have to, I mean, honestly, what it has grown into, it is quite commercial. It's, it, it is a big, it's highlighted, but if we focus in on the love and you take a step back, like being in the, observing mode 
have a bigger picture on it. Just don't be so in the details of everything. Everything that you wish to have is going to start to come in. Numerology wise, it's beautiful. Four is all about your heart and laying a new foundation for yourself around love. And nine is the ending of the old and coming into the new. It's also, it's also talking about this new platform because it's, it's a wish fulfillment, but it's also the unconditional love that leads to that wish fulfillment. And that in plain English just means if you work on, if you take a step back, if you're in the observer seat rather than, rather than the folk, like the, the people out there, it doesn't seem to match me. Whenever am I, gonna, am I gonna meet somebody? Am I in the wrong or right relationship? Like those questions, if you just let that go for just a moment, you just let that go and you take the observer seat and you just observe uh, sort of what you want from a loving place and start to, start to just summon the feeling of love even though a person is not here yet or even though you feel like you don't know what to do in a relationship. If you're in a relationship and you're just fully, full on, um, so happily in love, so in alignment with your person, probably to be honest this reading is not for you um this is if you feel like you might be questioning the relationship you're in uh and if you're single and you really want to get to ba get back together with somebody or you're just really looking for new love um it's asking you right now and it doesn't matter really what position you're in this is going to benefit you every single time if you find alignment with your inner being if you are looking for love in all the right places, um, is that Rihanna? This thing is looking for love in all the wrong places. I can't remember now. Anyway, um, we found love. Ah, <laughs> let go. Uh, um, yeah, it's like. Finding a reason to feel in love, to feel bubbly, to feel excited, to feel happy, that's going to do it for you. If you start to feel that, if you don't, if you wait for the person to come in order for you to feel in love, you're going to wait forever. I'm sorry to sound so dramatic and harsh, but you know, that's the universal law. If you, if you wait for the money to come here to, you know, in order for you to start to do something, you're going to sit here and wait forever. If you start to summon the feeling of feeling rich or feeling in love, feel a re find a reason, whatever reason, feeling in love or feeling like you're loving towards somebody or loving towards yourself, um, in the moment, the, the universe doesn't go, oh, she's just adoring that baby or she's just, or he's just sitting there with their dog being so like nourishing and, and loving towards that dog. Um, we're not, we're not being played here. We're not going to deliver a lover just because of that. The, the universe doesn't respond to that. The universe, the universe responds to your vibration. And so if you feel like you're in that loving place and, and grateful place, like you feel gratitude for whatever you have around you, it doesn't have to be babies and dogs either. It can be sunsets or sunrises or um, like right now, if we have like this much snow that we have and then the sun just falls on the snow, the glittery stuff that starts to happen, it's just, I can just stand like in awe, like it's so beautiful. That in itself can attract a person or the right type of version of the person that you're already with. Uh, I'm not going to clarify that. We're going to move on to this orphan. So there's something about, <clears throat> yeah, I forgot. Thank you. So uh, nine plus four equals 13. That's divine feminine. That's death is the it's the transformation number. It's death leading to life. We're saying goodbye to the old and coming into the new. So and the reason I was drawn back there to say that is because we have the orphan here and number five again, which is the great opportunity for change. These days are going to be over. So I feel like for the longest time, um, You've been orphaned, you've been, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have grown up without parents or grown up without, you know, just being in a, I don't know, 
let's not just either even go in there because it is not really um, any use because you're going to get out of it. I just feel like you probably have felt abandoned or you probably have felt felt orphaned. Like, is there really anybody out there that cares? Does the world really care about me? That type of feeling? Is there really... If you're with a person and you feel, have the feeling of, does this person really truly care about me? Is that, am I abandoned here? Am I gonna live this? Like, and, and that can be even harsher to be in a relationship and you're supposed to feel the love, but the love is sort of not returned. Then you can feel more orphaned than if you're, if you're single and you're alone. And if you're single, it's like, did the universe forget about me? Of course not. The universe is here to, the universe is trying to deliver this to you. The universe is coming in with changes and new beginnings and love and harmony and rainbows and, and, and wisdom and beauty and gratitude and, and milk and honey. We've, we read from the book. It just says it's the most sweet relationship that wants to enter your life or the most sweet version of the relationship that you're already in. Uh, but you, Aries, need to change your focus in order to start to receive it. You can't feel orphaned or abandoned and wondering if the universe left you out in the cold and at the same time feel love and gratitude and that you're nur nourished, uh, nurtured, like that you're tended to. Those are, those are completely different vibrations completely different vibra vibrations so you need to shift your focus you need to shift your focus and come into the observer mode like take a step back and understand like logically logically you're not the only person like okay so the universe responds to every other person's vibration every single person's vibration but Aries and love, no. I mean, it doesn't make sense. So of course the universe is responding to you and to go in deeper, it's you responding to you. So you've already created this most profound, beautiful, gorgeous relationship with everything that you want. And in order for you to be in alignment with it, you need to get out of the, the victim slash abandoned slash orphan slash uh i'm not lovable i'm not worthy of this you just need to get out of it you're worthy just by being born and just because maybe you had a tough upbringing or the love that you saw around you wasn't really to your liking that's not your fault and it has even that has even improved the relationship that you're about to step into because of the stuff that you've seen in the past when you see people treat other people bad, you immediately wish for kindness. And that kindness, the universe is on it. That's the Newman energy. That's 11. That's even, and I, I just thought about it before starting here today. I was like, oh my Lord. <clears throat> 14, the 14th of February, that's Valentine's Day. And over the course of this year, the number 14 has grown so like numerology wise has grown so, so has grown. I haven't really paid attention to 14 before, but now all of a sudden 14 is like the most beautiful number numerology wise as long as far as I'm concerned. Um, and it's like next level of gorgeousness and kindness and sweetness and milk and honey basically. And then it turns out, you know, numerology wise that 14th of February is, is the, that's beauty in, for February's, which is the number two, that's beauty in relationships, basically. Who knew? I didn't know. Um, and so you have every opportunity to sort of ride the wave now of this Valentine's, not sit there thinking, well, I don't have a Valentine on Valentine's Day, or I'm going to just be mad at this commercial day, um, or I don't care about this day because it doesn't, maybe it doesn't give or or take away anything from you but it's highlighted on love during this week it's definitely highlighted on love you're going to start to see all these stuffed animals and and candy and just use it to your benefit 
Like, oh man, there's so much candy out there. There's so much cute stuffed animals. I'm going to use that as a reason to feel love. And I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to start to observe what it is that I'm truly looking for. And give the universe a chance to deliver to you what it is that you're seeking. You need to get out of the orphan energy though in order for, for the universe to be able to deliver it to you or for you to be able to receive it from the universe. The universe has never, ever, ever forgotten that you're there. The universe is constantly sending you a signal. The, the greatest metaphor that I ever heard about like receiving um, God or source sources or, or the universe's signal is that um, if you're in this tunnel, it's like when they're on your phone and you, 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 you put the GPS in and you're going to the tunnel and all of a sudden it's like the GPS has no idea. Are you going forward, backwards, sideways? They have no idea where to guide you or you don't get guidance right now. And but the minute that you're out of that tunnel, you know, uh, the signal f from the ethers comes in again and tells you exactly. Maybe it's like a little bit right in there in the beginning, like quickly, quickly, where do I turn? Um, please like show me where to go and then if you give it a second and just calm down like there it is okay we're gonna just go straight on um but once you're like when you're in that tunnel you're not actually receiving the signal does that mean that the source stopped sending you a signal they're in the tunnel now we're not even going to send a signal we're not going to bother no this source which is you is constantly sending you that signal is constantly wanting to deliver this beautiful relationship to you or is constantly wanting wanting to um, hook up with you, want to connect with you at all times. The question is, are you in the tunnel so that you can receive the signal? Are, are your GPS like in tune with the signal or not? And if, you're, if it's not, you're probably in some sort of tunnel. You're probably in some sort of this. And then you need to get out of it and how you do that is by change your focus, change your focus onto freedom, onto uh, anything beautiful that you can find in your life. If it's hard to focus in on milk and honey and just the sweetness and just the gorgeousness of, of it all, this is surrounding you. This is outside of the tunnel. This is what the universe wants to deliver to you right now. Change new beginnings and love. That is what the universe wants to give to you right now. So need what need do for the love of yourself, whatever you can to get out of that tunnel. And the way you do that, if you don't feel the milk and honey feeling or the sweetness or the, oh man, I just feel love all around and I just feel so deserving of the love and, and the universe is with me at all times and I'm so outside of the tunnel. If you're not feeling that, go into observer mode, take a step back. And start to observe. Just start to observe. Just start to live in the here and now and don't judge anything. And by that I mean go into a room and just say, there's a lamp, there's a plate, there's a chair, there's a child, there's an animal, there's other people, there's a room, here's a floor, here's a ceiling, here's that sound, here's that smell. Just sort of neutralize yourself a bit. And just sort of look at things, observe things with absolutely no judgment. For me, I find that is the quickest way to get back to the signal, to get back to be out, out of the tunnel. I'm going to continue this reading in the extended. We're going to see what more love that we can find for you there. So if you feel like you resonate with this message, then you're so welcome to come there. If not, thank you so much for watching. Happy New Moon and Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Take care, guys.